Some might say Arjun is the worst modern main battle tank out there. Why? Why would anyone say such a thing? Well, the Arjun tank has a lot of problems. Stick around and you will see why. The first issue with the tank is the armor design, because it is filled with weak spots and unprotected areas. Let's start with the turret. The turret's design is definitely based on the design of Leopard 2A4's turret, but unlike Leopard's turret, this one is filled with weak spots. First one is the area behind the main gun sight. On the upper two, the thickness of the armor has been increased to compensate for the addition of the gun sight, so the area behind it is the same as the area beneath it. On Argent tank, that's not the case. The area behind the gun sight does not extend, so it is like someone cut the hole in the main armor and put the sight there. So the area behind it is far weaker. Another problem to which the Leopard 2 already had a solution is the side of the turret. The composite armor on the side does not cover the entire crew compartment, but only offers protection from the 30 degrees arc, where on Leopard 2 the covered area is far larger. Keep in mind that those things are not composite add-ons, those are storage containers. One massive issue with the protection that does not come from the armor is inside of the tank. That issue is the lack of the blast doors for the ammo storage in the turret. If you don't believe me, look for yourself. This is how ammo storage with blast doors looks like in Leopard 2 and inside the ammo neighbors. As you can see in this video, there are no doors closing or opening like on Leopard and Abrams. This means that if the ammunition gets hit, everyone inside is cooked. I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound really nice. Once the tank got upgraded to Arjun Mark II, explosive reactive armor was added on the tank to increase its protection, because it was probably deemed insufficient. The protection got improved, but, there is always that but, the area around the main gun site hasn't received any EREA block. So the already weak area of the tank was made even weaker than the rest. It's not really a small area either, not to mention that the gun method is also the weak spot of every tank. So on the turret you have one big nice chunk of a weak zone. Such a great tank. For the hull, the designers went yeah, fuck the Germans, we'll design our own. And the result is what you could expect, honestly. It's not really good. The upper front plate appears to have composite armor, but the lower plate does not. This can be concluded with the fact that Mark II variant has added explosive reactive armor protection only on the upper plate. The lower plate can just be seen with some dozers, but that is it. Any modern projectile will definitely go through that. Now that we are done with this great armor design, let's take a look at firepower. A June main battle tank is armed with 120mm rifled gun. Yeah, you heard it right. The gun is rifled. The problem is that the tank entered service in 2004. Even the armor design was old at the time, especially since the design of the Operator 5 turret already existed, and they decided to go with the one from the late 70s. And even the gun is basically the British one from the Challenger. But that doesn't really matter, because the projectiles are something special. Before I show you the APPSDS projectile for Arjun, I want you to keep in mind that when Arjun entered service in 2004, projectiles like M829A3 and DM53 already existed at the time. So behold, the Mark I APPSDS projectile. Arjun firepower is superb. Just look at that monstrosity. Yeah, it says the length is 944 millimeters, but that is the length with the casing. For comparison, both the M53 and MA2983 are comparable length together with the casings. But look at the length of the penetrator compared to the one of MK1. It's just laughable for that period. Even Russians who had problems with projectile lengths managed to develop GBM-59 Sweeney Swan projectiles at that period, and tanks such as T-80UA and T-80UE 
already had to upgrade its outloaders that could load the longer projectiles. Also, the T90A. Another thing with MP1 is that, because of a such a short length, the penetrating power is pathetic. It is said to have around 300mm penetration at 2km. The projectiles I already mentioned will have more than 700mm penetration at 2km, which is more than twice as much. Arjun is definitely today, it is comparable with any of the world class tanks. With respect to any feature, whether it's a firepower, mobility, or product. Yeah, sure, buddy, whatever you say. Arjun isn't completely pathetic. It has a decent power control system with thermal images and battle management system, and mobility appears to be decent. Well, it's for sure better than T 55 and T 62 tanks. Arjun is a 62-ton metal giant, comparable to some of the best tanks in the world. But Eddie isn't stupid. They probably realized Arjun isn't really a good tank, and they have ordered over 400 T90MS tanks from Russian Ural Wagon Zavod. T90MS is currently one of the best tanks in the world. It is comparable to US Abrams and German Leopard 2s, and it is far far better than Arjun. India already operates around 1000 T90S tanks, which can be said to have superior aspects compared to Arjun, while well, armor and firepower are definitely better. And that would be all. Thanks for watching. If you like my content, please consider supporting me on Patreon. You can also join my Discord server if you have some questions or just want to chat. Both links are in the description. And I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day. Arjun main battle tank is one of the most destructive battle tanks in the world today.